today we're going to Cartier. I'm just about to leave and then hopefully I'll also be able to take you to Bulgari because I definitely want to take another look at the piece that I teased in my wishlist video and maybe also see if there is anything else that catches my eye and who better to take than you guys with me on this journey. So we're picking up where we left off in last week's vlog, right at Cartier. And by now you guys probably know that I'm usually not the biggest fan of more popular mainstream Cartier pieces, but there are still a couple of collections from the brand that give me butterflies. And the reason we came in today is so I can show you some of those collections. So let's start with the Panther de Cartier collection, which used to be this really exclusive over the top collection that over the years they started introducing more wearable pieces too like this pink earring that i'm showing you here which is technically just a ring but i feel like these more statement rings make incredible pinky rings just like this one and yes it might not be as over the top as some of the previous panther pieces that you might have seen in the past but i have to tell you that the quality is uncompromised. It looks just as artistic and as sculptural as some of the larger skeleton pieces from the original Cartier collection. So if you're looking for something truly outstanding and tool dropping, but a piece that you're able to wear on a regular basis, this is a great one to look into. And then I also wanted to show you a couple of bracelets in case you're more of a bracelet person. So let's start with the newest addition to the Panther line, which as I said, they have been going smaller and smaller with just so they can make their pieces more wearable, I guess. And this is the thinnest version of the Panther bracelet, which really only features the Panther head and that's it. And because of that, I wasn't the biggest fan of this bracelet. I didn't feel like the fit on these was great. I did try a couple of different sizes and I didn't feel like any one of them fit nicely against the wrist. Although I must add that there is a matching ring to this line, which I much prefer, perhaps because there isn't as much wasted space as there is on the bracelet. But this bracelet, I didn't love. I much preferred this upcoming piece, which I know, I know it's a completely different story. It couldn't even be mentioned on the same page because this is quite out there. But exactly because of that, I feel like it features all the design elements that you love the Panther de Cartier line for. It has the beautifully crafted, pronounced panther head it has the little spots on the back of the panther which are made of black onyx and it is truly a show-stopping piece it's not for the faint of heart but what i love about this piece is that it will turn heads not because people will immediately notice that it's a cartier piece unless of course they are a connoisseur of cartier because it is quintessential to the house they won't recognize this from the far as they would a love bracelet or a Justin Clue piece, but they'll be gasping because of the incredible craftsmanship and impact that this bracelet has. And let's not forget that some people love a one-stop shop when it comes to their jewelry. If you are one of those people who prefers to have one statement piece and you don't want to worry about stacking, this is the perfect piece for you because if anything, I feel like you take away from the shine of this piece if you start stacking it with other bracelets, whether they are from Cartier or any other brand. This piece needs to be on its own and it will get you all the bang, well, for quite a bit of your buck, but all the bang that you could possibly want.
and then something from the complete opposite end of the spectrum if you prefer something more simplistic and stripped down here is the trinity collection for you but even if you cannot decide whether you prefer something more eccentric or classic cartier has still got you covered with their clash the cartier collection which for the longest time i was kind of torn about i couldn't quite Put my finger on what i liked and what i disliked about it because initially they only launched their pieces in one width but now you can find their bracelets in a medium and in a small width and i much prefer the small compared to the medium so i'm trying on the small bracelet here which i feel like this piece is the perfect balance of something classic with a touch of contemporary and kind of architectural and you'll see me shaking my wrist here and i did that so i can show you how each individual stud moves on its own which to me was just mind-blowing if you're a fan of design this is definitely a piece that you want to check out because what you're paying for here is not only the construction but how beautifully each individual detail is thought out And off I went to Bulgari, which in case you haven't seen my Berlin vlog and my 22 wishlist video, I'll make sure to have them linked down below for you. And if you have, you already know that the Bulgari Serpent bracelet is something that I am eyeing for 2022. I went to my local Bulgari store because I really didn't have too much time to have a proper look at them in Berlin. We almost missed our flight because I spent way too much time contemplating which Bulgari piece is my favorite so I wanted to really take the time to go in sit down and have a look at the entire collection across the board which I'm so glad I did because I discovered a piece that I did not see in Berlin but let's start with a couple of pieces that were a definite and immediate no-go for me not because there's anything wrong with them necessarily but they are just not really my aesthetic. The first one was the original Serpent Deep Bracelet, which is beautiful, but for me, it's a little bit too Bulgari, if you know what I mean. Bulgari has this mentality that the bigger, the more blingy, the better, which is just not really my taste. And I feel like this particular piece was quite outdated, how heavy and how overwhelming it was. It was beautiful, don't get me wrong, but just not really my taste. And then the next piece I was shown was this one, which is a little bit too literal for me. What I love about the Serpent D line is that even though it has this deeper meaning of it being a sign of protection and renewal, you can't really tell that it's a snake unless you inspect it closely. But this one, even though it was beautiful with the sapphire eyes and the malachite forehead, it was a little bit too snake-like for me. So I ended up trying on the same bracelet I came across in Berlin in rose gold. This is what personally I would consider the original Serpenty bracelet, the one that is full pave. It comes in yellow gold, rose gold, and white gold. Of course, if you know me, you know that I would go for rose gold, which is what I tried on here. And even though it's a stunning piece, I just feel like it's not one that I would be able to wear on a regular basis. I think it might be just a little bit too blingy for my lifestyle, which is not something that probably anyone has ever said before, but it might have too many diamonds for me. And I know it's the kind of piece that I would wear once and would never be able to wear it again. Even though it's stunning, and if you are all about the blink, these pieces feature anywhere between 2.8 and 3.3 .3 carats of diamonds. Obviously, it depends on which size you pick it up in. It ranges between small and large, and as beautiful as it is, it might be just a little bit too in your face for what I'm looking for. But then they showed me this piece, which I didn't get a chance to see in Berlin, which is kind of a similar idea and similar shape. But instead of the whole bracelet being set with pavé diamonds, it only has a few diamonds on the tail 
and then on the head of the snake. And this, I believe, has just under half a carat, which actually gives you quite a bit of bling, especially because the bracelet itself has a really high shine polished finish to it, which helps to enhance the sparkle that the diamonds give off. And when it comes to a piece like this that will never twist or turn on your wrist, or at least it shouldn't, there's kind of no point having an all around pave piece because the base you'll never see and you'll never have to worry about scratching the diamonds at the base of your piece. So. This is definitely pretty tempting and I'm kind of torn between this and the Cartier Panther bracelet. That one was such a special piece, the craftsmanship was absolutely outstanding. So I would love to know which one you prefer. Please let me know your thoughts in the comment section. I'll definitely have to make up my mind. But to be honest with you at the moment, I'm kind of leaning towards getting the Panther bracelet, which they're quite different from one another and they definitely add different facets to your collection. But for some reason, the Panther bracelet captured me. So I'll keep you posted on how it goes and when and if I'm able to make up my mind. But regardless, I'm really glad that I got to see the entire Bulgari Serpent D-Line, including the watch, which I also tried on. It was nice, but it's definitely not a piece that I would be interested in. But this actually completes today's vlog and this series of vlogs that I've been doing for the past couple of weeks. I really hope you enjoyed coming shopping with me and be sure to let me know in the comment section where we should go shopping next. And if you'd like to see more vlogs from me, Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope to see you back here with a new video really, really soon.